UK Finance, which is a trade organisation for banks and financial services companies based in the UK that essentially works on behalf of these large firms and represents 300 of them. And in its own words, which shapes the future finance landscape and solves the problems of today. Well, UK Finance set up a regulated liability network or RLN, which published its white paper all the way back in November 2022, and which is a financial infrastructure designed to use blockchain and distributed ledger technology that we know very well in the crypto space to incorporate and merge CBDCs, so central bank digital currencies, commercial bank deposits and tokenized assets altogether under the stated aim of promoting innovation in financial transactions. And on the 15th of April 2024, UK Finance announced that 11 banking giants signed up to this RLN and that a new experimental test phase would now take place. So please do like this video and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to offer more content for you in future. Just a reminder that nothing contained here is financial advice. And let's jump straight in and take a look at the regulated liability network in some more detail. What is the Regulated Liability Network, or RLN, experimentation? Well, the RLN is basically acting as a financial market infrastructure to combine together into one network or system, current commercial bank deposits, central bank money, so we're talking about CBDCs here, and also the tokenization of bank deposits. And they state that the aim is to focus on interoperability between these different forms of money, using blockchain technology to innovate the existing financial system that we have now. The RLN experimentation phase will run until the summer of 2024, after which UK finance states that we'll see the results soon after, and it will focus on three use cases. Firstly, payment upon delivery for physical products with the aim of reducing fraud online in marketplaces. Secondly, the process of buying a home with the aim here being to improve transparency for customers and mitigate conveyancing fraud. And thirdly, a digital bond settlement with the aim of connecting customers new digital money to settle digital bonds. UK Finance states that some of the potential benefits to customers, businesses, and the UK economy include giving users more options to manage their payments, enhancing fraud mitigations, and improving settlement capabilities. You can see here, in terms of the supposed benefits to customers and businesses, the mention of programmability, which obviously is a large concern, with these centralized CBDC projects. Also, we can see here that UK Finance does mention the BIS and Bank of England's Project Rosalind, which I covered in my previous video, and which you can find a link to here and in the description so you can check this out. So, this regulated liability network is certainly aligned with Project Rosalind with the Bank for International Settlements and with the Bank of England. And we'll see another similarity now because who are the technology providers for the RLN? Well, firstly, there's R3, which is one of the leading tokenization platforms out there called Corda. And R3 will use its expertise in operating projects in regulated markets and in distributed ledger technology. There's also DXC Technology, which is an information technology company, and Coadjute, which is a company that runs a digital ecosystem for the property market that's built on R3's Corda. But the potentially more interesting technology provider of the RLN is also heavily involved with Project Rosalind, and that is the cryptocurrency Quant, with you being able to see here an announcement from Quant on it being appointed to produce the technology prototype for the RLN 
or regulated liability network. Because if you remember from my previous video on Project Rosalind, which uses APIs, smart contracts, and Quant's overledger platform to function with CBDCs, etc., well, these are also being used by Quant on the regulated liability network to help ensure the programmability and interoperability of it. With the CEO of Quant, Gilbert Verdian, putting out a post on April the 15th when the news broke out that you can see here, expressing his delight in working on the RLN, on helping to create an interoperable platform for innovation for all forms of money, enabling the programmability of this API layer using Quant's Overledger platform and seeing how this transformative initiative will help to progress the UK's financial infrastructure. And who actually are the 11 large banks or financial institutions who are members of UK Finance and who have signed up to the RLN? Well, these include Barclays, Citi, HSBC, Lloyds Banking Group, Mastercard, NatWest, Nationwide, Santander, Standard Chartered, Virgin Money, and Visa, with most of these firms putting out statements about them partnering with the RLM. And we can see the issue of programmability mentioned again here through the statement put out by the CEO of Citi UK, who also mentions that the RLM would operate real time 24 seven. So avoiding the current delays of the existing financial system. And the executive vice president of blockchain and digital assets at MasterCard, who also mentions programmable money, but also tokenization, regulation, interoperability, and an increase in security. The chief payments officer at Santander also mentions programmability and tokenization, but does mention smart contracts and a shared ledger or blockchain. So I think you get the idea based on these three quotations alone. And the RLM project is also being supported by Ernst & Young, one of the big four accountancy firms and multinational professional services networks who were a partner with the RLN all the way back in 2022 and Linklaters, which is a global law firm. So the RLN is a huge project with large global firms participating in this new financial system they've created in which CBDCs, bank deposits and tokenized assets are combined with the cryptocurrency firm Quant again leading on the technological structure of how it functions, which could be bullish for it moving forwards. And we shouldn't be in any doubt that there is a lot of work being put in behind the scenes by governments, institutions, banks, and central banks on adopting CBDCs, combining these with our bank deposits and tokenized assets with them looking to improve the current financial system through areas like transactions and it operating 24 seven and leveraging smart contract, blockchain and distributed ledger technology, but also maintaining a large amount of control on what we do with our money, given that these smart contracts are still programmable and they can easily freeze funds, limit accounts, payments, etc., with of course no mention of decentralization or an individual being sovereign of their own funds in either Project Rosalind or the regulated liability network. But that ends this video. And as always, I'd love to know what you think in the comments below about it. And if you are interested in more of a tailored approach to your crypto education, and you think you'd benefit from having someone look over your shoulder and guide you on your journey. I do offer one-to-one -one coaching to those who have the desire and the means to educate themselves further. And there are links in the description where you can message me and book in a free video call to see if we'd be a good fit. And if you found this content interesting, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really does help and have a great day.